Today on the newscast, did Iran's Navy force a U.S. submarine to surface in the Strait of Hormuz? Plus, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says that a peace deal between Israel and Saudi Arabia is still possible. Get all the breaking details next. Folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast. We told you here last week that the Biden administration is still, yes, still, looking for ways to revive that disastrous Iran nuclear deal. Now, the White House is reportedly looking now at at least a temporary version of the Iran deal and looking to do business with the mullahs in Tehran. They have reportedly, has the administration, informed America's allies in Europe of their plans, and Israel is also aware the continued overtures and the continued charm offensive by the Biden administration towards the Ayatollahs comes despite repeated Iranian-sponsored attacks against U.S. interest in the Middle East. We reported here a few weeks ago about that Iranian drone attack against a U.S. base in Syria. One U.S. citizen was killed. He was a U.S. contractor working at that base, and six U.S. soldiers were wounded. Now, since the Biden administration took office in January 2021, there have been 78, count them folks, 78 such attacks against U.S. bases, U.S. soldiers in Iraq and Syria carried out by Iran and its proxies. And yet the Biden administration has only responded three times, carrying out airstrikes in response to three of these 78 attacks over the past two years plus. So it should really be no surprise that the Iranian regime is now claiming that it detected and basically chased a U.S. submarine out of the Persian Gulf. The U.S. says, hey, that didn't happen. We've got all the breaking details for you in a minute. Plus, BB says a Saudi-Israel peace deal is still potentially on the table despite Saudi's charm offensive towards the Iranian regime. Before we get into it, a quick reminder, folks, if you have not subscribed to the Watchman News channel right here on YouTube, Hey, click the notification bell, hit the subscribe button, and join us on a daily basis as watchmen and women on the wall for such a time as this. So much is happening in the world's most pivotal and chaotic region, the Middle East, and it affects you, by the way, no matter where you live, that you don't want to miss any of our daily newscasts. We would love to have you here as subscribers. Okay, let's break down this latest Iranian provocation towards the United States. According to the head of Iran's Navy, he said this today, a U.S. nuclear-powered submarine was traveling through the Strait of Hormuz, that strategic waterway, on its way into the Persian Gulf when it was detected by the Iranian Navy and forced to surface and escorted out of the Persian Gulf. Now, the U.S. right away, the U.S. Fifth Fleet, which is stationed in Bahrain, they said, nonsense, this never happened, no such incident occurred. Now, number one, we do know, and we reported this on the newscast last week as well, that amid heightened tensions in the region, with rockets being launched by Iran's proxies from Lebanon, Gaza, and Syria in the span of two days against Israel, the U.S. sent over, or was in the process of sending, a nuclear-powered submarine. We knew that. Is this the submarine that was traveling through the Strait of Hormuz into the Persian Gulf? The Fifth Fleet says, and U.S. officials say, hey, there was no submarine traveling. This is all a fabrication, a creation by the Iranian regime. So on one hand, we know a U.S. sub was on, was on its way. But on the other hand, folks, the Iranian regime is not exactly known for being truthful and forthright. And it is clearly looking for any way to project power and strength in the region and to the world. And what better way to do it than boast and claim that you forced a nuclear-powered U.S. submarine to surface. We will continue to keep a very close eye on this developing story. In the meantime, another developing story. If you missed yesterday's Watchmen live stream right here on the channel, we went for a solid hour live, took your questions as well during our Q&A session. You can check it out here on our homepage. Just go to Newscast. You'll find it right there. That's Wednesday, April 19th. We went for a solid hour and we talked a bunch, folks, 
about the situation right now in Saudi Arabia. As you know, we've reported here in the newscast, look, the Saudis are on the brink of restoring ties with Iran. Now, this deal was brokered last month by China's communist regime. Saudi Arabia and Iran, which have had no diplomatic relations over the past seven years, they've been at loggerheads. They're now coming back together and reestablishing diplomatic relations. Not only that, the Saudis are reestablishing relations with the regime of Bashar al-Assad in Syria. And oh, by the way, Mohammed bin Salman, the Saudi crown prince, met with Mahmoud Abbas, the leader of the Palestinian Authority this week, and a delegation of Hamas leaders are also visiting Riyadh this week. So folks, the Israelis are kind of standing back here and saying, uh, what's going on? Because Prime Minister Netanyahu, and if you watch my interview with him here on The Watchman, you know that he was talking very openly about the very real possibilities of the Saudis joining the Abraham Accords peace agreements with Israel. Is that out the window now? We went from seemingly being on the verge of Israel and the Saudis restore, or establishing, not restoring, establishing for the first time ever diplomatic relations. Instead, we have the Saudis establishing relations with Israel's greatest enemy, the Iranian regime. So what gives? What's going on here? I shared this yesterday on the live stream, and I'll share it again. The Saudis believe that they don't have a reliable ally in the United States right now. They also look at Israel right now and see a lot of internal tension and discord there, a somewhat uncertain situation in their view, and they feel isolated. Uh, they have a potentially nuclear-armed Iran staring at them from across the Persian Gulf, and they feel increasingly isolated. They feel alone. So I don't want to say this is if you can't beat them, join them type situation because the Saudis aren't suddenly going to align with Iran ideologically. But what I view this as, folks, this attempt to restore relations on the Saudis' part is a non-aggression pact with the Iranian regime, meaning, hey, uh, don't attack us and we won't trouble you. And by the way, call off your wolves, the Houthis in Yemen, at our southern doorstep as well. And that's what we have. To me, the Saudis are negotiating here out of a position of weakness and a position of being intimidated by Iran and its proxies. I think there's no doubt about that. And also from a position of, again, feeling alone and isolated in the region, although Israel has lined up alongside the Saudis and the other Sunni Arab nations in opposition to that Iranian axis. And Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu referenced that today in an interview. He said, look, yes, the Saudis are restoring diplomatic ties with Iran. That doesn't mean that the Saudis are aligned with Iran. It just means there's relations now. There's ambassadors in their respective capitals. And he said that, look, this doesn't mean that peace between Israel and the Saudis is off the table. He went on to say that 95%, and that's being generous, of all the chaos and instability in the region is caused by the Iranian regime and its proxies. He said the Saudis are well aware of this and... He did not cancel out the possibility of the Saudis eventually joining the Abraham Accords because obviously with the events of the past few weeks, hey, uh, reestablishing relations with Iran, Syria, meeting with Abbas and Hamas, uh, some are saying, well, it looks like the Saudi-Israel peace prospects are dead in the water. Bibi says that's not the case. What do you think of all this, folks? Leave us some comments here uh, beneath this video. I'd love to hear your take on Israel-Saudi potential peace, on what Saudi Arabia is doing here and why they're doing it right now with Iran and Syria and the rest, and the prophetic implications. I think right away of Ezekiel 38 and 39, where it says Sheba and Dedan, the merchants there, which I believe is the Arabian Peninsula, they protest when this latter days invasion force comes against Israel. What do you think? Leave the comments. We look forward to hearing from you. Thanks so much for joining us here today on the Watchman Newscast. Until tomorrow, God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace. Hey, everyone. Thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you never miss an upload. And tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. And don't forget to share your thoughts, insights, and comments below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.